morning, Northside Church of God. Amen. You know, I was reading last night and I was just reading where, you know, the creation proclaims the glory of God. In Psalm chapter 19 and verse number 1 through 14, it says this. It says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, and they use no words. No sounds is, is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth. Amen. You know, this morning, you know, I'm here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You know, there are, there are non-believers in this world today that they, that, they, uh, that they believe and they look at creation as a divine entity. And they look at it as a force that controls human destiny. Amen? Others believe that it just happened. Big Bang Theory, we've all heard that, right? But you know, the true believers are moved to praise and worship the Creator. Amen. God the Father who spoke this world and this universe into existence. And today we have that opportunity not only to worship the Creator, but also to worship the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world, and the Holy Spirit who is our Comforter. And we do so because we know the truth and we know Him. Amen. 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 Good to see you this morning in the house of God. We ask you to stand. And turn to someone and just welcome them into the house of the Lord this morning. church just got a couple of announcements this morning uh, first of all next Sunday uh, October the 8th following the morning service uh, there's going to be a church and pastors council meeting so council members if you guys will just plan on staying for a short time following the morning service for uh, an important meeting okay church and pastors council meeting next Sunday October the 8th following the morning service also, uh, it's October the 1st, so we are just one month away from, from trick or tr uh, Trunk or Treat. So again, we just want to encourage everyone to start bringing candy so that, uh, so that we can uh, be a blessing in this event that we've been participating in year after year for several, for several years. Be a great blessing for our, for our community. Also, just want to uh, again encourage the ladies on October the 19th, 6 p.m., 
here at uh, the church will be ladies movie night so just come and enjoy a great time of fellowship and then also men's gathering October the 19th uh, 6 p.m. at the Taylor County Horseman's Arena again great great fellowship and um, great great time of worship with uh, with a great group of guys and then we just want to uh, again encourage everyone to come out Wednesday night for our Wednesday evening connection hour uh, for a deep uh, for a Bible study and uh, again just encourage you to come if you want to get more and deeper into God's word this is where you want to be seven o'clock Wednesday evening At this time I want to ask our ushers to come as we prepare to worship and giving of our tithes and offerings and I want to share a few, few verses of scripture this morning in Second uh, Corinthians uh, chapter number 8 um, beginning with Yeah, beginning with verse number 7. And it says this, it says, But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in complete earnestness, and in the love that we have kindled in you, see that you excel in this grace of giving. And what the Apostle Paul was doing is, the Apostle Paul is writing to the church at Corinth. But he's basically telling them, telling the church in, in the verses preceding this, he's telling the church about the Macedonian Christians that in the midst of a severe trial and that in the midst of extreme poverty, that their joy was overflowing, that they had given even beyond their ability entirely on their own. So Paul and the apostles had not, had not approached them but yet it was just out of the joy that they had because of what God had done for them in save, their saving grace. They, they urgently pleaded with Paul for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people. In church, you know that everything that we do here at, ch at this church is in the service of the Lord's people. Amen. It Amen. doesn't matter if it's trunk or treat or if it's, if it's you know, giving to missionaries in Africa or uh, but the word is going forth and it's in the service of the Lord's people and Paul went on to say in verse number 5 he said that they gave themselves first to the Lord and that's important because God's got to be the first and the most and the, the number one priority in our lives but then he says this in, in verse number 7 which we read he said this he was encouraging encouraging the church at Corinth, he said, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. Amen. Amen. Church, it's important. It's important to be about the work of the Lord. But, but out of these verses of Scripture, the thing that really strikes me first was this, that Paul's writing said that they first gave themselves to the Lord. That's important. But also that they had such overflowing joy even in a severe trials and even in extreme poverty. And in doing so, the grace of giving that they had. In church, that is something that we can model after as well. Amen. Amen. When we do so, I believe that that just touches the heart of God. At this time, I want to encourage you to stand as we prepare to worship and giving. Let's pray. Father God, we just love you this day. God, we thank you for this opportunity that you've given to us to come and to worship today. Father, we just pray, God, that, that as we prepare to worship and giving, that first and foremost, God, that we put you first in our life. Everything that we do, God, beyond the four walls of this church, that we do it because of the love that we have for you. Father, I also pray that, that as we live our life, that we put you first in all things. If we do so, then, God, we know that our relationships with people, and God, that everything that we do would be blessed, and that, God, that you would be pleased with it. Father, today, God, as we prepare to worship and give, and God, we do so because we want to we want to be have a heart for people and the word and the ministry that goes forth, and we want to be a part of your great plan and all that you do in your kingdom. And God, we just pray that you would just bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Amen. We serve an awesome God this morning. Amen. You know, singing that song and just thinking about that, talking about such an awesome God, almighty God, and uh, all-powerful God, and, and we, serve, we, we do serve an awesome, almighty, powerful God. But then kind of the words of that song talk about his love and how sweet he is and how he loves us and, and how faithful he is to us. This almighty, all-powerful God just loves us that much. Amen. Yeah. And so I'm so thankful for that, for uh, who he is. He is, a, he is an awesome, mighty, good God, great God, but he is also a good God, a loving God. He loves us that he sent his only son to die for us. That's how much he loved each and every one of us. Amen. Can we just take one more moment and just, just worship him, lift up our, our hands and our hearts to him, our, our voices to him this morning. Father, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. Lord, that you are an awesome God. You are a mighty God, but you're a loving God. And Lord, I'm so thankful, Lord, that, Lord, you're not only a great God, but you're a good God. And Lord, that you love us with an everlasting love. Lord, you are tenderhearted. You are patient. And Lord, that you are a God that loves your people. And, Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, that you are mighty, that you are all-powerful, but that you are all-loving, that you are love. And, Lord, we praise you this morning. We lift you up, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your many blessings. We thank you for all that you have done in our life, Lord. We thank you, God, for salvation. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy and for your love. And, Lord, we're so thankful for all that you have done. And, Lord, in this atmosphere of worship, Lord, we, we lift up our needs to you this morning, God. Lord, you see all of our needs across the sanctuary, God. And, Father, we pray, God, for you just to minister to each and every need. Lord, you see what our family is going through, our friends, our community, God. And, Lord, we just pray, Lord, for, for each and every need this morning, God. We lift them up to you, knowing, God, that you are an awesome God, but you are a loving God. And, Lord, we just love you so much. We're so thankful, Lord, that there is nothing impossible for you. There are, all things are possible to you. And, Lord, that you say to cast our care upon you because you care for us. You love us. You have compassion towards us. And, Lord, we're so thankful for that this morning, God. We praise you and we thank you, God. We thank you in advance for answered prayers. We're so thankful for already prayers that have been answered but. Lord, we're, we're praying in advance and thanking you in advance for answered prayers this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you will do. And, Lord, we're so thankful this morning for that. We're so thankful, Lord, that you are an awesome God. You are all powerful God, all-knowing God, all-present God. And, Lord, we praise you this morning. We love you this morning. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. For all things, in Jesus' name, amen. As you're being seated, tell somebody, we do serve an awesome God this morning, amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. God is good, amen. God is good. So good to see everybody on this beautiful morning, amen. What a beautiful morning the Lord has given us. This morning, beautiful week, beautiful week coming. I think fall is in the air, amen. Thank, could somebody say thank God, amen. Uh, so good to have everybody um, this morning. Um, if you have your Bibles, would you turn to uh, John chapter 3? John chapter 3, we're going to go into a thought, a series, if whatever you want to call it, title, um, and the Lord just kind of put it upon my heart this week and talked about as I was just asked him, you know, what he would have me to to say this morning and just kind of talked about Jesus' words. Don't you think that's important, amen? And kind of the thought that came to my, my mind or the title or whatever you want to call it is Jesus said what? You got to say it like that. Jesus said what? Because there's many times in the 
in the Bible that Jesus, Jesus words, and you're just like, you got to take a step back. And, and I kind of put myself in the place of the Bible as, as this is happening. I kind of put myself there as Jesus might be teaching on the Sermon on the Mount or teaching his disciples or talking to somebody or whatever it might be. And just, you know, I know we have the benefit of the Bible. We have the benefit of a future. We have the benefit of looking back, hindsight, as they say. But just imagine yourself there at that moment when Jesus says these words. And you're just like, did he say what I think he just said? You know, you, we do that, right? Did, you, did he just say what I thought he said? And I can imagine that probably happened a lot. As Jesus came and, and, and he just, uh, you know, he came to, to fulfill the law, but he also came to be the new covenant. And so the things that were in the law, he came not only to fulfill, but he came to, to take care of and, and to show that he was, as Brother John said, the Lamb of God. He came to be that sacrifice. He came to be that ransom. And so his words and his teachings and and as you kind of put yourself in their place, you're just like, Jesus said, what? And so that's kind of the where I'm coming from with this uh, for probably the next few weeks. I just feel like uh, the Lord laid that on my heart. And so this morning, we're going to start in John chapter 3, uh, which I feel like is kind of the, the foundation of our Christian life. Amen. And you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But John chapter 3, we're just going to read a few verses, starting in verse number 1. Um, if you have your place, would you stand uh, for the reading of the Lord's word for a moment? John 3, 1 says, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. And Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so I want to start here and talk about what, what is foundational for the Christian life is to be born again. But can you imagine being, being in Nicodemus' shoes there? And we're going to talk about that in a second here. But being in the Nicodemus' shoes and Jesus saying, you have to be born again. And again, we have the hindsight of looking back and reading and, and understanding. And, and probably all of our life we've heard the, that phrase, born again. But this is probably the first time this has ever been said. And you're just like, what? Born again? What are you talking about? And so this morning, I want to talk about that, that as my title. Jesus said what? But you got to say it like this. Jesus said what? Let's pray. Father, we come to you this morning. We just thank you, Lord. I thank you for your words. I thank you for your spirit. Lord, I thank you for the word of God, Lord, that is truth. And Lord, I praise you this morning, and I worship you this morning, for you are a great and an awesome God. And Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory, because it is all due your name. And Lord, I just pray this morning, Lord, as I surrender myself to you, God, I pray Father, that you would anoint me as your, your vessel, Lord, that you would use me, God. Lord, that you would anoint my words this morning, God, and anoint our ears and our hearts to receive your words this morning. God, that you would speak to us, Lord. Lord, that you would challenge us. You would remind us, God. You would strengthen us and encourage us, Father. Challenge us with your words this morning. And, Father, we praise you. We thank you. We put this service into your hands, and we pray, Holy Spirit, have your way above all. That your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Father, we praise you and we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. As you're being seated, tell somebody, Jesus said, what? You got you to put that emphasis on it now. You know, Jesus, the most influential person that has ever lived, was known to bring two things into the world when he came. Now, there's, of course, there's more than two things that he brought, but the Bible talks about two things that he brought with him to this world and that he offers this world. First of all, grace. Secondly, truth. 
John 1.14 tells us, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. His grace carries us into an eternal relationship with him. Without his grace, we can't be saved. Amen? It is by his grace that we are saved. Not our works that we can boast, but by his grace. And it is by his grace that we are able to have the opportunity to have eternal life, eternal relationship with him. To have a relationship with him and to follow after Jesus is the most imp- who is the most influential person that ever lived is an honor and is a blessing. It is, it, is a, it is a pleasure, it is an honor to serve him, amen? And none of us, listen, none of us deserve the grace that he gives us. None of us deserve it. The, the, the very definition of grace is unmerited favor. In other words, we can't earn it but he gives it. That's why Ephesians 2.8 2, 8 tells us, for 